Hello again, I'm glad to see you decided to continue on. Today we will be setting up our workspace so we can begin familiarizing ourselves with the working environment. We will be installing IntelliJ, Java Development Kit, and Compiling Bucket. If you haven't watched the previous episode, I highly recommend watching it as we went over what all of these are. With that said, let us begin. First we are going to install JDK from oracle.com. If you google JDK or click the first link in the description, you will be brought to the following page. I'm going to go with Java 11 for reasons I explained last time. After clicking download, you will be brought to a page with all of the different versions. I am using a 64-bit installation of Windows, so I will download the compatible installer. Read the terms and conditions and if you accept, click the download button. You will be prompted to sign in. If you don't have an account already, feel free to follow along as I go through the registration process in attempt not to dox myself. First, click on create account at the bottom. Then fill out the basic information such as your email, name, password, etc. And about halfway down you may notice the fields like job title, work phone, and company address. If you are not registering as an employee for a company, feel free to put random information or just copy what I put in the box, which is just random information. After this, you will need to confirm the email sent to the email address you put in the registration form. You may now log in and download JDK. The installation process is simple. Just keep pressing next until you are finished. Make sure not to modify the installation location unless you know what you are doing. The next piece of software we are going to install is IntelliJ. There are two versions of IntelliJ, one is paid and one is free. The free version has more than enough features for what we are going to be doing. With that said, you can click on the second link in the description or Google IntelliJ. On this page, click on the download button and then click on the download button again under the community version. If you install the ultimate version, you will need to pay. If you are a student, you may use the ultimate version for free. The installation process for this is also extremely simple. Just press next until finished. Finally, we need to download the bucket API. This one gets a little more technical, but I will make it simple to follow along. First, click on the third link in the description or Google Spigot build tools. This is the guide we are going to be following. You first need to download git from git-scm.com. You can click the fourth link in the description or Google Git. Then click on downloads and select the compatible version for your operating system. When installing, make sure to keep the git bash here option ticked and press next until finished. Now that we have git installed, we can compile the bucket API. Head back on over to the Spigot page and click on this link to download build tools. Then move build tools to an empty folder and right click in the empty space and select git bash here. A window like this should pop up and then you want to use the following command to compile the API. java-jar buildtools.jar. Let's break this down so you know what is happening. Java is the base command. This lets the computer know to let Java handle whatever we type in here. When you type arguments in Java, you need to include a single hyphen before the argument to signify this is a new argument. The jar argument tells Java we are trying to run a jar file. The next string you input after the jar argument should be the path to the jar file. Since we are in the directory of the build tools jar file, we only need to input the name of the file. Running this command right now will download the Spigot API which is the same as the Bucket API except it has a few extra bits. To keep things simple, I recommend downloading the Craft Bucket API which is a direct implementation of Bucket. To do this, simply type dash dash compile craft bucket to the end of the command. This time the argument we input has two hyphens before it. 
This lets Java know it is an argument for the program, not the runtime environment. You can use the optional argument dash dash rev followed by the version to download a specific version. For example, using dash dash rev 1.8.8 will install 1.8.8. .8. You can look on the Spigot page to see all of the available versions. After you decide if you would like to use Spigot or Craft Bucket and what version you are downloading, run the command. Depending on how fast your computer and internet are, this will be very quick or rather slow. Congratulations, you compiled the Bucket API. You are one step closer to being a programmer. It may not seem like you did much, but it's very impressive you managed to complete this step and understand the process. Give yourself a pat on the back. I mean it. I actually do it. Anyways, that is all for today. I will see you next time. Goodbye.